Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do Tekken 7 online gameplay with Leo. But I got him looking like my boy Soda Toru Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen. Or at least tried to make him look as much as he could. Uh, real quick, for every 100 subscribers this channel gets, I'm going to do a $100 giveaway to one lucky subscriber. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so and hit the like button down below. And remember, any donations, big or small, will help the channel grow. Thank you, I hope you enjoyed today's video. So real quick, before we get into Leo's story, let me let give you a quick um, story background on Satoru Goju from Jujutsu Kaisen, which this is how I dressed him up to look like, at least. So it says here, and if you haven't seen that anime, go do yourself a favor. It's really good. Um, go watch it. Now it says here, Satoru Goju is a complex individual. He is normally seen to be a nonchalant and playful towards his students or close colleagues and friends. However, he is um, very cruel towards sorcerers, executives, an example being a bland disrespect towards the principal um, Gaku Ganji and his enemies, right? Now, Soratori is extremely confident in his ability and reputation as a powerful sorcerer, believing himself to be invisible. His opinions of others often only go as far as his judgment of their strength, but he is quite um, apathetic towards anyone he deems weak. Now, in additional it says greatly influenced by his own desire for power he is very arrogant he is convinced that he is the strongest in the world which technically he is claiming during the fight with toji fushigaru that throughout the heavens and earth he alone is on the honor one he alone is the honor one that's that's some cool shit to say like <laughs> when he was um taxed with protecting uh riku Amanaya, I think that's how you say her name. If I didn't say it right, sorry. It says one of the new, um, one of the few weak people he genuinely grew to show compassion for. However, any empathy of her death was soon negated by his extensive amount of pride and arrogance. After um, perfecting his reverse curse technique in his following battle against Toji Fushigaru, during the intense battle, Sarutoro is seen to occasionally fall into frenzy fighting states uh anytime anybody says that my only image goes straight to naruto shippuden when hinata just got killed and that motherfucker just lost it like one of the best scenes in anime but that's where i always go to when i see somebody just like snapping now it says here uh urged by his determination for victory undeniable proof that he alone is the strongest uh, his combative style is characterized by his aggressive um, demeanor attacks while flaunting his master techniques to opponents. Furthermore, in a crisis, he is capable, he's capable of being cold-blooded. Nice. <laughs> uh, he prioritizes uh, his enemy's destruction over saving innocent people when he believes that the sacrifice is unavoidable. I mean, shit, if I can save you, I save you. If I can, I mean, shit, shit happens. I mean, it wasn't his fault, it's the bad guy's fault. It says, nevertheless, despite his strength, Saratori, uh, Saratoru is more human than he first appears. After defeating Toji, Saratoru uh, retrieved Riko's corpse with a sorrowful look, showing that his resent and conceded victory temporarily clouding his feelings. He still felt some grief over her death. He sought to kill the Star Religion members that were laughing over Riko's death. Um, though he was stopped by Saguru Ghetto, uh, who he believed is one of the, his moral compass at the time before taking any action. Furthermore, Saratoro was later left visible horrified as he panicked after learning that Sadugo, uh, Suguro, his one and only best friend, has become a murderous curse user. Saratoro attempted to reason with his friend but eventually realized that accepted that he lost the one person he truly saw as an equal. After having to put an end to Sadagoro before more calamity arose, it was Sadagoro's trauma over losing his best friend that caused his ultimate downfall in the Shibuya. Now it says here, he was also distraught when Yuji seemingly died. So that's two people that passed away during fights. It says Sarutoro's end game um, is to reform the Jujutsu world from the bottom up through his education. He seeks to foster a new generation of sorcerers that hope will one day become his equals overall skill level 
Even among special great sorcerers, Sadatora is known to be the strongest sorcerer in the series, holding both immense amount of curse energy and dangerously powerful techniques. As a student, Saratori and Suruguru were both considered the strongest, capable of making short work, experienced and powerful curses user. After realizing and perfecting the capability, Saratori's ability vastly increased to where he was able to put Tojifu Kushigaru into a defensive and ultimately killing him with his strongest technique. It says here where where before he and Ghetto were only no match for the renowned sorcerer killer. As he continued to grow, uh, he eclipsed Sorogoro's might and where Sorogoro admitted to Sadotoro was truly become the strongest alone. Sorogoro also stated that Sadotoro had the capability of killing all humanity by himself, which Sorogoro admitted was out of his own ability that he could not do that basically. And didn't even try to fight back when Sadatoro prepared to kill him. Although Sadatoro ultimately relented as he was unable to kill his former friend. Yep. So it says here Sadatoro's hand to hand combat power now. That's at a whole different level. Now it says here Master of hand to hand combat. Sadatoro, in addition to his overwhelming levels of curse energy, is also an incredible formidable martial artist in con in close Round combat one. damn like this guy's just overpowered it's like madra uchiha over there with extraordinary physical powers to back up his skills he was capable of completely overpowering uh jogo in a hand-to-hand -hand combat delivering several precise attacks and jojo's fatal spots and could even casually uh, fight off his overpowered both Jogo and Hami with sheer close combat easily countering their attacks and landing powerful hits that swiftly pummeled them into submission. Damn. That's a bad motherfucker bro. Immense strength. Sarutoro possesses tremendous physical strength to fight against powerful curse without problem easily causing several injuries. Jogo with powerful punches and throwing him a considerable distance with a single kick during their fight. Uh, he was also able to easily rip out Jojo's head and later his arms and sheer physical force even managed to casually rip out Hanami's roots. Damn bro, you know how strong you have to be to rip somebody's head off? That's crazy. Uh, he could casually rip apart uh, trans transfigured humans tearing them apart limb by limb. God dang. Saratori immense speed now. So not only this guy has hella energy, let's like the best way I could compare is like to Naruto's um, chakra, right? He has this, like he has his own reserve of immense sorcerer energy, and not only does he has that, but he's super fast, and he know he, he's like a well-rounded martial artist. Like this guy is overpowered. All right, so let me go to his speed now. It says immense speed and reflex. Naruto is extremely fast fighter, capable of moving faster than the eye could perceive. He managed to easily um, outpace Jogo, throwing almost in imprecise punches and kicks Sarutoro can also eliminate a thousand transfigured humans in five minutes damn again that's like Madra in the fourth great ninja war when he went in against the whole army he was just by himself slashing uh, slashing people up so that's what this guy could do too it's ex tactical uh intellect gojo is quite tactical and capable of figuring out his opponent's plan with minimum information all right so that's Shikamaru right there uh, he has also shown to be extremely adaptable to any enemy he has ever faced off knowing precisely what to do to counter them technique and find ways to defeat them. This is the best display during uh, the bout against Jogo and Hanri Choso and Mahio where he was shown to be capable of convincing multiple battle strategies while fighting and blind speeds protecting civilians keeping property damage to a minimum and all while dodging and evading the attack of all four curses. So again, if you haven't seen Jujutsu Kaisen, go watch it. It is a badass show. Alright, so let's get into Leo's story mode, right? So it says here his personality. Leo is described as cute and charming on the surface, but dangerous on the inside. Uh, this, deter this determination drives Leo to take risks, like sneaking into a train full of armed men from the G Corporation in their Tekken Tag Tournament 2 ending. Yep, I remember that. Now it says here in Tekken 6 the Brawlock test it says Leo is the child of the world famous 
uh, spell longer and a G Corporation female executive. Now I have no idea what a spell longer is. Now it says here, although Leo's father went missing during an expedition many years ago, he did not stop the youngster to desire to become a spell longer as well. So spell longer expedition. So okay, so he's like Indiana Jones. Then he likes to uncover stuff, or at least that's what I'm thinking. Uh, so it says here, guided by the warmth of a single parent, the quiet youth grew up to become an upstanding citizen, possessing a strong sense of justice. However, their happy days together ended when Leo's mother was murdered by an unknown killer. Hmm. Leo was stricken with grief and shut out the rest of the world. But when the police ceased their investigation without explanation, despair changed to anger. Leo vowed to find the truth without help. And um, the explanation, Leo vowed to find the truth. Now, of course, someone killed his mother. You're not going to let that shit go. Now, during the investigation, eventually the name Tasio Mishima of the G Corporation came up. Uh, suspecting his connection with the murder, Leo attempted to meet with the men. However, with Tasio's renowned newfound status of a world hero throughout the action of the G Corporation, it was impossible to get within his um, proximity. It was then that the news spread out of Mishima Shaibatsu holding the King of Iron Fist Tournament 6. Leo found out that Kazuya Mishima was to appear in person at the tournament. Now, deciding that this may be his only chance to take revenge, Leo enters the tournament. The ending description it says here, uh, Leo pays a visit to Emma's uh, grave, his mother, to find a letter reading, Dear Leo. Leo reads, reads it and then turns around suddenly to find someone standing there. And then the camera pans over Leo's face and points up. So they never told us who was there. Now in Tekken 7, the prologue test says, says Leo entering the King of Iron Fist tournament in the hope of uncovering more about his deceased mother, who has been uh, a research for the Mishima Saibatsu. When Leo learned, that his battle at the arena was to be a Saibatsu owned dojo, he couldn't believe his luck. However, when he got there, the dojo was in ruins. The moonlight poured in through the holes and the walls and the roof illuminating the floor with the eerie beauty. In a short while later, a strange floating silhouette appeared, slowly gliding towards Leo. The silhouette held a sword on its left hand and rotated it to a mind-bending speed. What the hell was this thing? It looked like some kind of flying squid or octopus. Was it a demon? Then finally dawned on Leo that this bizarre creature was his opponent. Cautiously preparing to fight, it says the ending description is that after defeating Yotsumitsu, Leo ponders of what the, what the hell exactly was he looking at. Leo pokes at one of Yotsumitsu's tentacles and immediately jumps back in shock when it starts to squirm. Remembering his mission, Leo bids Yotsumitsu farewell and leaves. Well, there you have it guys. That was Leo's story. I hope you enjoyed today's video. See you guys on the next one.